Shabbat Shalom. Welcome. Welcome to Fountain of Blessings this Shabbat. As you can see, I am very excited because we have a special guest, Apostle Raymond Williams, who is the pastor of Forbidden to Fail Ministries here in Tampa, will be bringing us a word of encouragement. I pray that you would open your hearts tonight to receive what the Holy Spirit would have to offer. And before he comes to speak, let us worship together and sing a song. Join your heart with mine. everybody. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. My name is Raymond Williams. I'm so elated to be with you today. I'm excited to be on the platform. I'm excited about what God's going to do between our relationship today via this, uh, this broadcast. And I hope that you will receive something of value to your life today. I want to take a moment and just tell the Lord and savior, Jesus Christ of my life, that I am excited about what he's doing. I'm, gl I'm grateful and glad to be on this platform. And I'm so thankful. I also want to give honor honor to Pastor Rosemary Latortu for the opportunity to stand on her great platform uh, that God has entrusted her with. I'm so thankful. Thank you for the opportunity to share on Fountain of Blessings today, this great ministry. I hope that I would say something that would add value and challenge your relationship with Jesus Christ to go to another level. Let's get into it because I've got a whole lot of information to give you in a short period of time. So let's have some fun. Let's get into it. Listen, you're going to do a lot of writing today. So get your writing utensils. Make sure you take lots of notes so that you can remind yourself later of what the Lord has said to your heart so that you can increase your faith again and again and again concerning the things of God. Let's get into it today. Today, I want to chat with you for just a moment and I want to talk to you about three keys for producing faith on fire. Three keys for producing faith faith on fire. I sense in my spirit that this is, this is someone's faith producing season. In other words, God has brought you to a place in your life. Somebody on the other side of this video has been asking God to increase their faith. Lord, show me how to trust you. Give me another measure of faith. I want to believe you God, like they believed you in the Bible. Well, I've got good news for you today. This is your opportunity. This is your season. This is your moment to begin to walk in that exponential faith. Let's get into some things and let's see what God has to say. As we're moving along, I'd like for you to write this down, write this piece of information down. This is my faith producing season. Write that down right now, if you will. This is my faith 
producing season. Now let's talk about what faith is. Now faith can be a many, can be many of things. Many people have many different interpretations of what faith is. That doesn't mean that they're right. It doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means that that's their definition, their interpretation of what faith is. Let me give you three interpretations of what I'd like to share with you today concerning what faith is. Number one, number one, faith is an unwavering conviction in a belief a system or a person. Faith is an unwavering conviction of a belief, a system or a person. Faith number two, faith is a deeply embedded assurance that some something will happen. Let me say that again. Faith is a deeply embedded assurance that something will happen. Number three, and lastly, faith is a deeply implanted knowing that someone will deliver what they have promised. Now, I I particularly like that definition. Faith is a deeply implanted knowing. There is a no, a God. There is a knowing down in your soul, a knowing deep within your spirit, embedded within the fibers of your heart that knows that what someone has promised me, they will deliver. The reason I like that one especially is because when I think about the someone who has promised me something, it normally is not man. It's normally not my mother. It's normally not my father. It's normally not my wife. It's normally not a pastor. But when I think about the promises that that has been made to me, I normally think about God. I normally, ah, God, I normally think about my Lord and Savior. I normally think about the promises of scripture and the things that God has promised me concerning my salvation and concerning my soul and concerning who I am as a son in his kingdom. I have a question before I go any further. Is there anyone on the other side of this camera today who is excited? You get excited. There's a knowing down inside of you that knows that if God has promised it, he will come through. It doesn't matter how long you've got to wait. It doesn't matter what the process looks like. It doesn't matter who comes, who goes, who will, who won't. It doesn't matter what the resources look like. All that matters is that I've got a word from God and before I waver or bend or lean or tuck tail and run away, I'll stand flat footed and I'll take him at his word. If that's you, would you just take a quick praise break and just give God praise for being a deliverer and a keeper of his word? My God, my God, your mama might fail you, but God's word will never fail you. Your daddy might not come through, but God is not a man that he shall lie. He is not the son of man that she should have to repent. I said, listen, your best friend might walk away and leave you, but God promised that he'd be a friend that sticks closer to it than a brother. You ought to give God a praise just for that right there. If I listen, if I drop the mic and turn the camera off right now, I think I have said enough to set somebody free who has been struggling in their faith with God. Would you just say this with me? Say, God, thank you for for faith boost. Thank you for faith boost. Let's get into our lesson today. Now, let's get into this. Here we go. Uh, th- this is a season. Let me let me let me say this. We're going to start with this. This is the season in which God is desiring of you the greater the greatest measure of pleasure that you've ever given him. Let me let me say that again. This is the season of your life where God is desiring from you the greatest measure of pleasure that you have ever given him. Now you may be saying, what do you mean by pleasure? What explain to me what, how do I give God pleasure? Let me, let me give you a scripture reference for that. Ephesians chapter 11, verse number six, majority of my scripture reading is going to be today from the new King James translation. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number six, Hebrews chapter 11, verse six says this, but without faith, It is impossible to please him to wait a minute. What's that word? Please him to give him pleasure. 
But without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So so God's desire of your life is for you to give him pleasure and your faith gives God pleasure. Would you say that with me? Say my faith gives God pleasure. I want you to write that down as a note. You're going to need that later on in your life. Write that down. I'm going to give you a hot second to write that down. My faith gives God pleasure. So when God gets ready to have pleasure with you, when God gets ready to have intimate moments with you, he God, he'll, he'll create circumstances in your life. He'll create opportunities in your life. He'll create situations in your life for you to have to exercise your faith in him so that it might bring him pleasure. So the next time you find yourself facing hardship, the next time you find yourself in a tight spot, the next time you find yourself in a place where it looks like your health is not getting any better or the finances aren't getting any better, or the next time you're praying for salvation for one of your family members to come to know Christ as Lord and Savior, and it doesn't seem like things are getting any better than in their life, and it doesn't really seem like they're they're reaching that point to give their life to Christ. I want you to remember that God has created that moment. He has allowed that moment in your life in order to be a faith producing moment so that it might bring him pleasure in the relationship between you and him. Your faith brings God pleasure. God gets pleasure out of your faith. My God, my God. In order to have faith on fire, you are going to need to make sure that you are receiving your information from the right source. Now, in order for your faith to be increased, you're going to need certain information in your life. You're going to need certain information downloaded in your spirit. You're going to need to be indoctrinated with certain information in order to gather faith, in order for your faith to come alive, to be exuded, to be illuminated to catch on fire. And you're going to need to make sure that that information is coming from the right sources. I cannot say that enough. You're going to have to make sure that if your faith in Jesus Christ, in your faith, if your faith in God almighty is going to be caught on fire, you're going to need to make sure that you are getting your information from the right source. Let's talk about key number one. Key number one, three keys for setting your faith on fire. Key number one for producing faith on fire. It is produced by planting the seed of God's word in your heart. Oh my, 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 my. Let me say that again. Faith on fire is produced a fiery faith, an exciting faith and a live faith is produced by by planting the seeds of God's word deep down inside of your heart. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17. You need to write this down. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now listen to this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You don't just hear the word of God with your natural ear, but there is a spirit man inside of you that is receiving the the word of God, which then increases and begins to grow your faith. Let me use this analogy if I may. If, If you are gonna have faith in me, if you're going to be able to say, I believe in Raymond. I believe that Raymond will come through. Then what has to happen is at some point in our relationship, Raymond has to make you a promise. Raymond has to say something to you. You have to hear the voice of Raymond in order to confirm that's Raymond and I can trust Raymond. Not only that, But Raymond then has to do something within the relationship to validate and to prove that he can be trusted, that he can be believed. Oh, my God. 
goodness. And this is the good thing about the word of God. This is the sweetness of the word of God. God says something to us. And as we read what he says, as we hear what he says, as we meditate on what he says, then what he said begins to come alive in us. And we begin to experience the blessings of God. We begin to experience the promises of God. And we begin to experience a relationship with God that he begins to do what he has promised. Now, let me say this. God has always been doing what he has promised. God has always been doing what the word says, but it's not until we come in contact with the word, the word comes alive in us that our eyes are open and we begin to see that God has been doing what he says. Oh, now that's a whole different ball game. That's a, that's a sermon all in itself. And we'll deal with that at another time. So faith, listen to me carefully. Faith does not come without the word of God. Let me say that again. Faith, faith in God, faith in Jesus does not come without the word of God. You cannot have faith in God and not have his word. You cannot have faith in God, real true faith. You cannot have faith on fire. You cannot have unshakable, unquenchable, unmovable faith in God. You can't have steadfast, unmovable faith in God without becoming acquainted with his word. Because as I stated earlier, it is by my words that you begin to believe what I say. It is by the persuasion of what I have said. So it is by the persuasion of the word of God. If faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, then that means we've got to have his word. We've got to submerge ourselves in his word. We've got to indulge ourselves in the word of God in order for our faith to come alive. In other words, we got to feed our faith. And as they would say, starve our doubts. And the way you feed your faith is by getting in the word of God, taking on the food of the word of God, sucking on the breast milk of the word of God, eating of the meat of the word of God and feeding your spirit man, that it grows and becomes strong. Let me ask this question. Is there anybody this morning who is excited because you're starting to feel that faith growth right now? You're starting to feel that you are growing. You're starting to feel that God has taken you to another level of your faith, that you're beginning to believe God more than you've ever believed him before. If that's the case, if that's you, would you just write, I want you to write on your tablet right now or write in the comment section, send us a comment and just write in the comment section that my faith has increased. That's all you need to send us. My faith has increased. Just write that in the comment section and let us know that you're receiving a faith increase by way, not by way of me, but by way of the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this. Let me, let me say something else. The word of God strengthens our heart during trials. The word of God strengthens our hearts during trials. So, so whenever you have trials, the word of God strengthens your heart, not only during trials, but let me add this as well. The word of God strengthens our heart for the trials. In other words, what I'm saying to you is don't wait until the trial comes to get in the word of God. Don't wait until the trial. Let, let me use an analogy and I'll probably use these young men as a reference point a couple of times through this lesson. Um, here's a reference point. Remember in the book of Daniels, uh, there's a Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown in the fiery furnace. Many of us heard the uh, Sunday school about these guys, right? Now, when they were there, they, they was, they were standing one day and the King said to them, Hey, Daniel, um, Shad, excuse me, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I want you to bow down. And I want, and when you hear all these instruments, you're going to bow down and you're going to worship, you know, all of this stuff and worship me and worship the staff and uh, the, 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 the image and worship all of this stuff. And they said to him, they said, King, know it, be it known unto you. They said, the God we serve is well able because he threatened to throw them in a fiery furnace and turn up the heat seven times. If they did not, they said to him, we will not bow down because the God that we serve is well able to deliver us from your hand and from this furnace. They said, but if he does not deliver us, we still will will not bow down to you. You know what? They did not. You can't make a statement like that and stand that bold in faith. If you wait until a moment like that, to make that decision. These guys had already made that decision long before the trial had ever set. Let me tell you something. One of the reasons you need to catch this word today, one of the reasons you need to get your faith on fire today is because tomorrow you're going to be facing a trial. Oh my God, that little short 
five foot four bald headed man did not just tell me that I was going to be having a try. He was doing so good, just blessing me and telling me how God was going to deliver me and how great life was. Now he talking about this trial stuff. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Excuse me a minute. Mm -hmm. I just prophesied to you that you're going to have a trial coming your way. I just told you the truth. I'm telling you the gospel, the gospel truth. And that's why you can't wait to get your faith on fire because you're going to have some, you're, watch this now. Every deliverance must be tested. Now, if you say you've got faith in God, then it's got to be tested. And therefore you want to make sure you're prepared before the test. Number three in that point is that the word of God is the seed that grows our faith into, into a faith tree. The word of God is what grow. It's the seed that grows our faith into a faith tree. What do I mean by that? The word of God is what makes our faith strong and unshakable. While we might blow a little bit and we might even bend sometimes, we won't break. We won't fall over. We won't uproot because because we've got faith in us. It doesn't mean that the trials of life won't ever affect us. It doesn't mean that we won't cry, that we won't feel pain. It doesn't mean that we won't have loss in life. But what it does mean is that we can stand firm in our conviction that regardless of what happens, he and he alone is still God. <laughs> Woo, glory. He's still God. Point number two, key number two, key number two uh, for producing faith on fire. It is it is produced by doing what the word of God says. Now, we talked just a moment ago that we need to have the word of God richly in us. We need to have the seeds of the word in us. Now, number two is that faith on fire grows. Our faith produces fire. Our faith becomes a faith on fire by doing what the word of God says by doing what the word of God says in James chapter one, verse 22 through 24, James chapter one, verses 22 through 24. You've got to do what the word of God says. If your faith is going to grow. All right, here we go. James chapter one, verses 22 through 24. But the doers of the word, excuse me, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror for he observes himself go away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So, so it's not enough to read the word of God. It's not enough to hear the word of God. So the word of God, hearing the word will grow your faith. Hearing the word, excuse me, hearing the word of God will produce your faith. It will even grow your faith. You will have strong faith, but your faith doesn't produce results unless you act on your faith. You've got to put your, in other, you got to put feet to faith. You've got to put some action to the faith that you say you have. James says, don't just be a hearer. Yes, faith comes by hearing, but the apostle James says, look, once you've heard it, once you received it, you've got a responsibility to put it to action. And let me say this, it is possible that many people today, that many of you watching me today are, are not receiving the benefit of of having strong faith. You're not seeing the results of your faith, not because you don't have faith, but because you have not yet activated your faith. And today I have come to be a faith activator in your life. I have stopped by to help you activate your faith. I have stopped by to give you a reminder that you have everything you need. You don't need more faith. You just need to activate the faith that you have. How do I activate my faith? By getting started with the business that you said God told you to start. By writing the book that God told you to write. By starting and launching out in faith and being vulnerable enough enough to have a relationship with someone after so many broken and failed attempts. How do I increase my faith? How do I activate my faith 
preacher man. You activate your faith by simply taking God at his word. And I, listen, I didn't say you wouldn't have any fears, but I'm saying moving into what you fear, trusting and believing that number one, God would never leave you nor forsake you. Number two, God will be with you always. Number three, no matter what comes against your life, no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. Number four, just believing that no matter how bad it looks, no matter what you've experienced in the past, that all things will work together for your good because you are called according to his purpose and you love him. You activate your faith, beloved, by getting started. Do me a favor. I want you to write this in your notes right now. I want you to describe this. I am activating my faith now. No, 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 no. Don't just write. I am activating my faith, but I want you to write on your notepad. I am activating my faith now, right now. Now what I want you to do now that you've written that in your notepad. Now I would like you to go to the comment section and I would write like you to write us. Just put in the comment section. I am activating my faith now. We would love to hear how many people out there are activating their faith. We would love to hear that it was by the word of God that was taught today that gave you that extra boost, that gave you that strength, that gave you that tenacity, that gave you that audacity to, to activate your, how dare you activate your faith? Write in the comment section right now and share with us that I am activating my faith right now right now. Write that in the comment section, please. I'll give you a second to write that. Would you write that right now? I am activating my faith now, right now. Let me say this. If we fail to do or to act on what we read in the word of God, our faith will fail to grow. So either our faith will grow stagnantly or it won't grow at all. You can't just hear, you can't just receive, but you got to take what you've heard. You've got to take what you, what, what you receive and you got to put it to activation. You got to put it to act. You got to activate it. Uh, I want you to notice this. I'm going to read something and notice this. You don't have to turn there, but I want you to write down as a side note, because I want you to go back and study this. Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11. Here are some examples of what it means to activate what you've heard. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, you will see this as you read throughout that chapter, you'll see what's called the hall of faithers or the hall of faith. And here's some of the things you'll see by faith. Abram, excuse me, by, the, by faith, Abel, Abel offered in the book of Genesis, Abel offered uh, to God, a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Abel had to put some action to it by faith. Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen. He hadn't seen what he heard yet, but he moved with godly fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his family. Notice these men did something with what they heard uh, by faith. Abraham obeyed when he Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out of a place which he would receive an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going. So by faith, these men had to put some action to what they say there they heard. You can't say I heard God. You can't say God spoke to me and then not be willing to launch out and do something with the information that you heard. And lastly, number three, number three, key number three, producing faith on fire. We must put God's word to the test or God's word. We must allow God's word to test us or to be tested. This means, this means we must stand firm and not waver and not give in. Watch this. Now we must not give in and we must give God the opportunity to prove himself for us. We must stand firm. We must not waver and we must not give in. We must not give in to the temptation to run away. We must not give in to the temptations uh, to fold to the temptations to move away from truth of the word of God, but we must stand firm and we must give God an 
opportunity to prove himself to us. Once you have received the word and your faith has been, been uh, your faith has begun to grow. You have now, you recognize now I have faith. Then once you have begun to put that faith in action, then you must allow God to prove himself. Now I said to you earlier, you're going to be tested. I'm sorry, beloved, but that's the truth. We are going to be tested. Are you understanding what I mean? Let me share this piece of scripture with you in the book of Malachi chapter three, verse number 10, a very familiar piece of text. Malachi chapter three, verse number 10. The Bible says this, the Bible says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse and prove me or test me or put me to the test, says the Lord. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you have not room enough to receive. Now, I'm not here to talk to you about tithe. Now, if you are a tither, if you are a giver, you should find some time, find a way to give to this great ministry, Fountain of Blessings. They are doing a great work throughout the city, through around the world, lives are being changed through this great ministry. And if you are receiving from this ministry, I encourage you to give to this ministry, but I'm not here to talk about finances. I only wanted to use that scripture reference to, to point out to you that God instructed and challenged the priest in these days to trust him, to take him at his word, to have faith in him, to believe him, to activate their faith in him. Now, let me give you one very important last point. Very important to remember, keep in mind that when, when you are tested, when God's word is tested, when God decides to test you, listen to me carefully. It is God who decides the process. You know, I got a saying in our church, there are some Christian bad words, right? There are words we, we don't want to hear. We shouldn't be saying in the Christian arena. And one of those words that we have subliminally saying as a metaphor, process. We don't like process. We, I just want to be there, Lord. Just bless me. Just get me there. But God has a process to getting there. God has a process to getting you blessed. God has a process you've got to grow through to grow. God has a process to getting you from one place to another place in ministry. God has a process for marriage. He has a process. There's a process in raising children. There are processes and God is a strategic process planner. God is a master of processes. Nobody does processes the way God does processes. And you don't get to interject your opinion or your thought or how you think or your ideas of how the process should go. So I need you to remember that. So if you find yourself going through a process that is stretching your faith, just know that is intentional. Speaking of faith, I believe that God has set the stage today for somebody who has not yet placed their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I believe that you have reached that point today and God has set your faith on fire. The Bible says that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. The Bible says that we shall be saved. That's the book of Romans chapter 10. The Bible says you shall be saved. The apostle Peter was preaching a message in Acts chapter two. And along that message, he came to the end of his message and an entire group of people asked a question. Someone screamed out from the crowd and they said, brothers, what must we do to be saved? The apostle Peter took a deep breath with joy in his eyes. I can see him now. And he said this, he said, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins, you and your entire family, and you shall be saved. You know, God loves you so much. God wants nothing more but his best for your life. His best doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have all the money in the world. It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll drive a brand new car. You'll have a big home. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you'll know all the popular people in life, but his best for you is for you to have salvation. His best for you is for you to know his son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and savior, that your name might be written in the eternal book of life, that you might have joy and joy unspeakable, that you might have life and life more abundantly. Listen, friend, would you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today? It's very simple. Not only do you pray a prayer, but you've got to consume you. You've got to uh, decide in your heart that I repent of my ways. I repent of my sins. 
I am tired of who I am. I am tired of who I have been. My life has been on a downward spiral. My sins, I am sick of my sins. I am over myself at this point. I am disgusted with the life that I have lived in my own terms. Or maybe at one point in your life, you knew Christ as savior. And you have come to a point today and you have been convicted in your heart and your faith has been pricked and your faith has been, there's a little flicker of flame in your faith. And you realize now I need to get myself back in alignment with God's purpose for my life. Would you just repeat this with me? Would you say this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I come to you now and I surrender my heart. Forgive me for all of my sins and for attempting to live life on my own terms. Right now in the name of Jesus, I accept Jesus as my savior. And with all of my heart, I repent of my ways. I repent of my sins and I turn my life over to you. In Jesus name, take my life now and do with it as you will. And thank you for the salvation of my soul. Do me a friend, get, do, do me a friend, do me a favor friend. If you prayed that prayer, if you surrendered your heart to Jesus, if you sincerely, sincerely given your heart to the Lord and today that faith on fire, you have caught faith and you have surrendered it to Christ. You have put your faith in Christ as savior. Would you do me a favor? Would you write it in the comment section so that we'll know that our ministry has made a difference in your life today? Also, would you just send us a little note there at the bottom? We would love to make contact with you. We'd love to pray with you some more. We'd love to encourage you and make sure that you're connected to a Bible believing church. We'd love to make sure that whatever area of the world you live in, that you can get plugged in somewhere and get the word of God. Would you do that for me? Listen, my name is Raymond Williams. I have had a blast hanging out with you today. I pray God's peace and prosperity over the life of you and your family. If you don't remember anything else I've said, which I hope you remember it all, don't ever forget these next few words. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. You are absolutely, positively, 100%, unquestionably forbidden to fail. Purpose is waiting on you. Engage it. God bless you. Have a great day. And I hope to see you soon right here on Fountain of Blessings. Be encouraged. God bless you, everybody.